Hello, it's Alex. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a ridiculously long time since I was last here on YouTube. I just took a bit of a long break over Christmas and wasn't really in the kind of new year, new start zone until the yeah, last few days really. Um, so it does mean I've got a lot to catch you up on in terms of sewing and also I had a bit of a refurb in here in my sewing room so in a minute I'm going to take this camera off the tripod and give you a quick whiz round and show you what I've done. This was my oldest daughter's bedroom, it's the smallest room in the house and she chose it because she was at uni and she thought, haha, <laughs> she thought she was never going to really live at home um, kind of permanently and when we had the lockdown I thought it was a bit small for her so I swapped uh, my sewing room which is was down in the basement with this room and we kind of just cobbled together with bits and pieces we had and kind of said well let's see how it works and I can always change it later on and it wasn't massively efficient partly because I just had so much stuff um, coming from a bigger room into a smaller room um, yeah it wasn't particularly streamlined and I needed to just make more efficient use of the space in here. So um, my husband was in the kind of DIY zone and uh, <laughs> I kind of took advantage of that. He offered to give me a hand in here. So what I've done, actually, I'm gonna do what I said. I'm gonna take you off this tripod and give you a whiz round. So what I now have is a desk that goes from the back wall all the way to this wall here, the internal wall. And as you can see, the advantage of having that running the full length is that I can now have not only a separate space for my sewing machine and my overlocker, but even my much loathed cover stitch machine, which I'm hoping means that I can actually now spend a little bit of time learning to love it because a lot of the problem I had with it before was it was tucked away and now all I can do because I've got wheels on my chair up there is just whiz up and down according to whichever machine I want to be on um, which is luxury of luxuries isn't it on the desk I had before I had to kind of pull whichever machine I was working on forward and now I can just wheel myself along according to whatever I'm doing this here is the daylight lamp but most importantly it has this magnifying bit in the middle here and I find I use that quite a lot um, <laughs> mostly for unpicking but I thought it would be all right having it there because I always had it to the right of my sewing machine but in fact when I'm now at my overlocker it's just completely in the way not only of my elbows but my fabric I think I'll just replace it with something not as cumbersome as this kind of angle poise thing. Obviously I've had great fun putting cards and things up. Um, Dave's also moved my thread holders down because they were higher up because there was a shelving unit there which meant that I couldn't actually reach them and really irritated my son quite how often I had to come and get him to lift threads up and then there's another one up there with, with the not so interesting colours on and um, still got look rainy Manchester in January standard <laughs> I have this little tray next to the sewing machine which has all the bits and pieces I tend to grab the most. I find it easier in a little tray than in a pot. So tucked in the corner is obviously as you can see computer admin bits and pieces. Um, a lot of the time when I'm sewing I will have something like Netflix on or I'll be listening to a play or an audio book that sort of thing. On the other side of the room is my cutting table so it's, it's narrower than the one that I had there originally because that has allowed me to have it the full length of the room. You know in an ideal world it would be lovely to have a cutting table the width of a piece of fabric but can't have everything so I'm quite happy with this um, width and I know the height works perfectly for me. I've got my two existing cutting mats and obviously they don't fill the full surface so what I'd really love to do 
is to have a custom made cutting mat but I haven't found anywhere or I don't know of anywhere in the UK that does them so if anybody knows please let me know I'd love to know I mean it sounds like the sort of thing that might be quite expensive but that would be wonderful so this by the way is what I'm working on at the moment these are going to be some pajamas for my dog don't ask um I'll show you them when they're finished if they work and these are obviously some granny squares I've been crocheting. Um, I have only learned to crochet in the last two weeks. I've been doing a Zoom crochet chat with So Yarn Crafty and Jen Hogg Generates. When I started, I'd never even picked up a crochet hook, let alone made a granny square. Um, as you can see, I'm going full on 1970s vibe here. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to finishing it. But the idea is to make a jacket like, uh, or inspired by the one Esme wore in the Great British Sewing Bee Christmas special, if you're in the UK and you've got to see that. So they are the beginnings of that jacket, including look, this one that went wrong. <laughs> and then above the cutting table, I've got now two sets of shelves, which again are running the full width. So it's giving me a lot more storage than I had before. So I'm now able to have on the left here all the birder magazines that I've got. I'd like to tell you they're in date order, but I haven't really got around to doing that yet. There's a couple of fibre moods in there as well. And then next to them are some sewing books. The ones that are more kind of like patterns and books about fashion and that sort of thing, I tend to keep downstairs. These ones are more about um, pattern cutting or sewing techniques, that sort of thing. Um, so they're all there, ready at hand. This jar is the one that's full of bits and pieces I need for either drafting or pressing or pattern sort of modification. This I bought in a local shop we've got. We call it uh, Danish Ikea because it's got an unpronounceable name. Uh, I've no idea what it's actually designed for, but it's really good for pressing um, points in collars. And then I have my hole punch, which I tend to punch holes in patterns to mark darts. And, you know, this is really handy for tracing off the dreaded birder patterns. Uh, that's a pretty rubbish version, uh, you know, seam gauge, that sort of thing, all, and everybody's friend, a buttonhole chisel, and yes, I know I'm supposed to have a safety thing on the end, but I haven't. I've also got a notcher for, um, not, you know, my clipping out little notches on patterns, which I always think I'm going to use, and I never actually do. Right, so, uh, these are just bulldog clips because I use them for my postcards and posters that are waiting for some frames. The jug I used for water for the iron and was one that came free with a bottle of Pims. <laughs> uh, those are just notebooks and then the iron and hiding round the corner here is one of these which is designed for pressing jeans buttons and rivets and that sort of thing and I bought it a little while ago and still haven't got around to working out how it works so that's on my to-do list for this year. And then I've got the ubiquitous IKEA pegboards. This one's got my clapper which is absolutely invaluable and up here these are chalks these are sharp things that need to be disposed of, mostly bent pins and blunt rotary blades. Those are my fresh rotary blades and my scissors and rotary cutter. I have this one um, was a cheapo Aldi or Lidl. I use that one for paper so that my good one doesn't get ruined and I keep that one for fabric. A bit like scissors really. Um, again, another pegboard. I'm trying to keep samples of any fabrics that I use to see how they all work together colour-wise. Obviously my labels, these, uh, you know, they may look like pebbles to you, but I use them as pattern weights and my daughter will paint me some up every now and then. 
and then the last one is measuring tools um, most used is my graders square which the lines have almost disappeared on I've had it so long so maybe I need to get a new one of those at some point um, these here are patterns for the dreaded face masks only dreaded because we don't really want to be wearing them do we and every time I make a pocket I keep a template of the pocket so because I find that they're quite good for pressing around so most of those are hard or fairly thick so I keep those all there and then above I'm doing exactly what I did before which is keeping any PDFs that I've made and have printed out get bunged in an A4 envelope with the pattern sepitated onto the front and then each box is uh, divided up according to what kind of garment but they're absolutely full to bursting this one here which says miscellaneous uh, couldn't have more in it it's actually got things balancing on the top so I need to get a couple of more of these but um, I don't really want to pay £40 for delivery from Ikea just for a couple of cardboard boxes so that'll have to wait and then down here I've got the same drawer unit including the one that doesn't quite fit um, and I've managed to get all my large overlocking cones into here um, on the left there is ribbing and then this side is my guillotine and my vintage irons that, as you know, I use for pressing quite a lot of the time. The drawers are largely the same. Very satisfied with this one, which is where I'm keeping all my interfacing and each box is a different type of interfacing. So there's stretch. These are scraps. Uh, that's over there, the woven ones. Uh, this is washable. I know it's mad isn't it really but I love it and then here are all my fabric swatches from the swatch club from Lulu Designs which is absolutely invaluable having this let me show you because now it's been going for a year now so there's a lot of different fabric swatches in there so it's really really handy to have and in fact just before Christmas there was a new seasonal update hold on I'll go get it this is the um, winter edit that came towards the end of last year so you get four swatches with uh, that will be seasonal and will also be in colours that will work with your colouring so as I say I have found it absolutely invaluable because I've now got a whole library so these ones um, may not be around kind of year on year, but there's a kind of core set and then a seasonal set. So that's where I keep those in that drawer down there. And then I've now finally, it's not beautiful, but I now finally have space to have my ironing board up, which I didn't have before because the both desks were so much wider. There just wasn't space. And what I missed more than anything is the prim cover that I have on here which I've mentioned before I mean obviously it's got the gorgeous watermarks all over it now but I find that having the markings on this ironing board cover is absolutely brilliant you know when you're doing pockets and you want lines to be straight hems to be straight it's so good for pressing it's a bit thin so I've put a bit of interlining underneath just to kind of pad it out a bit if it's in the way I'll just sort of push it down um, underneath here it's not very exciting those are sort of bits of um, fabric that I keep for making knickers if they're jersey or face masks and my pressing tools my ham and my sleeve arm and my stationery and what was here well oh, this by the way let me show you this hold on this is one of those um, silicon oven liner sheets that I've just put you know on a ribbon and I keep underneath the ironing board and that I use for when I'm using interfacing so don't worry about the interfacing ruining my lovely ironing board cover yeah what I'm just going to show you is that in that little space there where are a load of albums in vinyl was my little vintage record player but one of my daughters has already stolen it 
who knew that in 2021 teenagers would want to be listening to music on vinyl all in all i'm really really happy with it i feel very much like i'm playing at being shopkeeper um my coat on the end there is um <laughs> is actually a merchant and mills pattern from their book i can't remember what it's called i'll put a title up and i just made it out of gray twill because i watched that film the phantom thread at the cinema and um, i don't know if you've seen it but in the atelier all the tailors wore white coats and i got a bit carried away with myself and thought oh when i'm in my sewing room i'll have this coat and it was an excuse to sew something it's got nice big pockets and i did some bias binding on the facing but of course it is a bit nonsensey really that i was going to come up every time and put my <laughs> sewing coat on i've still got my double recycling bin under there one side is paper one side is fabric um, as you can see dave made these kind of supports underneath because what we know from experience is that if you do make a table like this you need to give it quite a lot of structure otherwise when you're sewing the surface bounces like no tomorrow so he made these supports which are at an angle but should brace the tabletop enough but also allow me to you know wangle my feet under there with the various sewing pedals so that works really well and other than that nothing very exciting there's a stool hiding under there because occasionally uh, the family come and visit me for a chat <laughs> oh and what i didn't tell you is that underneath that bottom shelf we repurposed some led lights that did once live under our kitchen cabinet it's one of those things you know your husband keeps in the shed and thinks will get used one day and they actually did so that's great so that's the tour of my refurb um i yeah i'm really aware of how lucky i am to have a space that's all functioning and everything's got a place now my fabric is in the hallway out there and still needs a bit of a sort out so i'll um update you on that later on but it will just be a bit of a tidy up i should think hopefully um but yeah i don't think it's always been like this i definitely did my time of being on the kitchen table or the dining room table and having to tidy everything away and when the kids were little having to be careful of pins and scissors and all the rest of it so yeah it's really nice to have something that's it's particularly the whizzing up and down on the machines that's what i'm looking forward to and what i didn't mention is that uh the new floor that we put in which is laminate flooring is purely came from a suggestion from the brilliantly named my stash is legal over on instagram because i put a picture up of the kind of work in progress and i'm saying i'm still not sure what to do about this floor because it was a mix of the original victorian floorboards and some wood chip that had been chipboard that had been put down at some point uh, because my daughter had pulled the carpet up so to have this laminate floor which she suggested is brilliant because now pins and fabric and all the rest of it are going to be so much easier to pick up and it feels nicer under my feet and Dave's put a bit of cushioning in there so yeah completely spoiled really aren't I um I have done a bit of sewing over Christmas and there were a couple of things just uh when I left off that I'd already made so I'm going to quickly show you what I've made because most of it was fairly basic and I did make a couple of gifts so I've not got them uh, one thing I made for my mother-in-law which worked really well is I'm just taking my slippers off <laughs> is the um itch to stitch do a pattern which is a capelet and it's a really good one to make for somebody whose sizing you're not sure about um because yeah it's it's very roomy and basically it just kind of goes like this with some stitching here so you put your sleeves in or your arms in so it does create a sleeve it was a really quick and easy um, thing to make and I made it out of the chenille that uh, Casey at TFG Fabrics had given me which was like a wine coloured chenille with glittery bits in it and I took it to her before Christmas on Christmas Eve actually and it fitted her absolutely perfectly it just thrilled to bits of it so hopefully I'll um, get a photograph at some point um, actually I want to ask you a question about my mother-in-law uh, which I know is going to sound a bit strange but Kath 
is a sewist. She doesn't sew a lot anymore because she has some problems with her fingers and it's very difficult for her. Um, but I was thinking of doing a little bit of a kind of interview with her and asking her what it was like to sew kind of back in the day. Um, because not only is she somebody that's sewn all her life, she is a retired soprano and when she was on stage a lot of the time she made her own dresses and her own garments which were all very glamorous and glitzy and um, yeah I thought it might be kind of interesting to have a chat with her about what it was like to sew at that time she's in her 80s now um, but I don't know if it's of any interest so if you think it is of interest please let me know in the comments below I'd really appreciate it and uh, we are in a support bubble with her, so we're allowed to see her and um, yeah, it might be something nice for her to do as well at some point. So yeah, please let me know. Anyway, one of the things that I found myself wearing quite a lot over Christmas was the uh, Staley top from Elba Textiles, St Elba Textiles that I made in my favourite faux angora fabric. And I was wearing it so... No, I didn't make it in faux angora, did I? I made it in... I don't know what that fabric is, it's some kind of sweatshirt in jersey, it's lovely and soft, but it's starting to pill already. Um, that goes to show how much I've been wearing it. So I wanted to make another variation of it. So I made this one that I'm wearing now, um, and this fabric is brushed French terry, also from uh, TFG Fabrics, who do the faux angora. I originally bought this thinking I would make uh, the Arlo jacket from Named Patterns out of it but when it came to it I found myself just not being that excited by it so change of plan. Um, I added a tiny bit of length to this because it's cropped um, and curved at the front there. A tiny bit of length to it just I think about five centimetres or two inches and that just felt a little bit better for me lengthwise because cropped tops are a bit new to me really because even though you know my weight fluctuates like a lot of women I'm going up and down and up and down um, but even at my absolutely you know tiniest I've always had a bit of a tummy and so I've always avoided anything cropped because I thought why would I want to kind of highlight that bit that's my least favourite bit but actually, I've been finding that the slightly cropped um, tops, both this and the, what's the other one I've got that's cropped? Oh, the Seamwork Astoria, are actually really, really versatile. And the tops that I'm wearing more often than not, they work really well over dresses and really well with skirts. So it's a bit of a new find to me at 52 to start wearing things that are more cropped. And at the end of the day, I'm not really ever going to hide the fact that I've got a tummy, am I? You know, it's there. So I decided to make another one, but just adding that little bit of length on has really helped. And this fabric is quite a find as well because it's a nice hybrid between a brushed, like a fleece back sweatshirting, which can be a bit thick and heavy and warm and the loop back French terry so it's more like the weight of a French terry but it has the brushed back that's not quite as thick as um, fleecy fleece back sweatshirting but a sort of nice little hybrid so it's a lovely fabric and obviously a very me kind of a colour so pretty kind of much of a basic and then the other thing so while I'm talking about all things cropped um, yeah, I made this cropped cardigan, which is the Jennifer Lauren handmade juniper cardigan. If you've watched me before, when I made my Armadale dress from Stylark, it has a higher waist and I wanted to find a cropped cardigan to go with that. And then I made a bit of a hash of an attempt. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Um, but yes, I was looking for a cardigan pattern for David. He asked me to make him one. Um, and she has a really nice men's cardigan pattern which is the Auden Cardi and then while I was on her website as you do I'd spotted this one the Juniper and it was just before Black Friday so I waited for the Black Friday sale in case there was a discount which there was so um, I bought both of them uh, they're very, very similar in terms of their construction. They have really interesting, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see it on this darker color, 
but it has a raglan sleeve but rather than just being straight up it kind of goes up and then comes across at a bit of an angle so it's got a really nice shape to it they're both very similar this uh, the juniper has a separate seam band here and the Auden has the option to have a separate seam band or an integrated one and the one I made for Dave is integrated um, you know so it's a self one it does have some interfacing so you need a bit of a knit interfacing and they were both obviously I made them both more or less one after another but they were the, it's the first time I've had a pattern from Jennifer Lauren handmade and I really liked how they were drafted I thought they were absolutely beautifully drafted but the only thing that I haven't done with either Dave's or mine is I've done no buttons uh, or buttonholes because I'm a bit nervous about making buttonholes on a stretch fabric and in both cases we said we're never likely to actually button them up so we've kind of left it off but I've decided uh, I think it's going to be my next thing after making the dog coat um, my next thing is going to be to um, be brave and to do some stretch buttonholes on this cardigan just because I think it would finish it off a bit better if there were buttons at the front there it was a nice easy one and as I'm always saying this faux angora fabric is just brilliant to sew with it's fabulous Dave really likes his I was hoping to get him to come and kind of model it but it's just not worked out and if I wait for that to happen it, I, you know we're never going to get anywhere um, yeah it works really well the only thing I did with his is the men's version, the Auden, is quite fitted. So he fitted size-wise into an XL, but I went up to a double XL. And it also has a little bit of shaping at the sides, and I just got rid of that. So I just drew lines straight down um, because I knew he just wanted it to be like a comfy layer to put on when he's working from home really um, and that worked really well the sleeves are a bit long on it but then he's not massively tall so that's probably why um, so those were those bits and pieces and then the other thing I made hold on was a bit of a night shirt out of the Lady McElroy uh, fabric that I bought a while ago with dogs on and I said at the time I wasn't sure what I was going to make out of this fabric. I bought it because I have a white greyhound type lurcher. Um, and I really liked the oversized shirt pattern. I've got some fabric that I've shown you before that I've earmarked to make myself one out of. So I thought, why not make uh, do a bit of a dry run really, a bit like a toile. I'll make a version in this fabric and wear it as a night shirt. However yet again one of my daughters has stolen it from me uh, grace really loves it and she says she's not going to wear it as a night shirt she's going to wear it as a shirt shirt we don't have the same taste everything i think looks great she thinks is boring and everything she likes i don't understand that's how it's supposed to be with teenagers and their mothers isn't it um anyway so i made this so this version is a size large which I think I probably made it in a large thinking I'd have it as nightwear. Anything I've made from the assembly line I've always made in a medium because they do tend to be quite roomy. I'm probably a UK 14, 16, something like that. And this is massive on me. Hold on, it's this big, I'm not keen on it. And the other thing you might spot if you're aware of this pattern is that it does actually have full length sleeves and I didn't quite have enough fabric for full length sleeves so I just chopped them off basically again thinking I'd be wearing this in bed um, but one thing that's great about this shirt fabric shirt pattern is it's got pockets I mean it is kind of somewhere between a tunic really and a shirt but as you can see I mean it's huge it really is I know the title says oversized but even so the instructions were really good they do feel a little bit more like translated instructions on this pattern than I've noticed on uh, previous assembly line patterns because they're a Swedish company. It, they were just the odd little bit that just kind of struck as not being written by an English speaker and, and I've never noticed that from them before. Um, but they were great. They didn't use the burrito method for the yoke at the back. It does have a yoke and uh, a pleat at the back didn't use the burrito method they used the method where the 
uh, yoke on the inside, you press up the seam allowance and then either hand stitch it or stitch in the ditch. Um, I just ignored that and I did the burrito method because I'm used to that and I really like the burrito method, it's just so cool. Um, but it's really, yeah, other than that it's great. The um, placket on the right side, the side with the buttons, you don't top stitch down the, um, the placket, so the placket's folded to the inside and you don't top stitch it down on the outside, which I haven't seen that before. Left me scratching my head a little bit, um, trying to work out whether there was a missing instruction or not, but I just went with it and actually it works really well. So I will definitely make this in a smaller size, in that really nice fabric that I've got earmarked from it from my maker. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, this has now been stolen by my daughter. And I also, from the assembly line, made their other new pattern, which is, you know, it's like a shirt bib, but it called, I think it might be called the mock shirt or the mock over shirt or something. So hold on, they're all outside, that's why I keep disappearing. I was really excited to see this pattern come out because I've been looking at some of these little um, shirt bibs or shirt fronts in um, shops like Cos and thinking, oh, I could easily kind of rustle that up myself, but now someone else has done it for me, so that's always easier, isn't it? And this fabric here um, with the birds on is actually lining fabric that I bought from Fabworks, it appeared on uh, their website over Christmas and I just couldn't resist it. I just thought I've got no project in mind for it at all but I really like the colours and I really like the birds on it um, and so yeah as I say it's lining fabric it's not really supposed to be for this kind of thing and um, yeah I was using it really as a bit of a tester and one of those things I was just having a fiddle with but it came together really easily. I Rather than being uh, dress sizes, you measure your neck and you go by your neck size. So this is actually a small to medium. Um, I added some ties on. So the idea is, hold on, let's do it with the cardi. You just pop it on and then it does give you a notch for adding ties. I just had some ribbon that happened to match reasonably well. Um, and then you can wear it under anything, round neck, a dress or v-neck dress, jumpers, that kind of thing. So you wouldn't really wear it under a cardigan because it would show, but it'll give you the idea. Um, and then there are two collar options. This is the plain round collar and then there's one with a frill. So Um, and you could easily, if you don't want a rounded one, you could easily just draft a collar piece, continue it down into a point. But if that was a jumper like that, I can't see. Um, yeah, there you've got an extra collar. Did I put a... Oh, there's no button at the top. Honestly, Alex. Um, but yeah. I just had a little fiddle with it and I thought it could be really nice. I particularly, I'll show you, I'll go take it off and show you. Uh, I was particularly impressed myself with my pattern matching. I, I really just could not resist this fabric. I think, imagine having a coat with lining like this in it. I'll be back soon. Thanks for <laughs> sticking around if you've watched this long and um, sorry it's been so long. If you've got any ideas about custom worktops, that'd be great. If you well, let me know what you think about the idea of me talking to Kath about her experiences as a sewer and um, sewing her clothes for stage. That would be really good. And just keep commenting, keep in touch. And if you fancy subscribing, click the box wherever it is. That would be brilliant. And I'm always over on Instagram. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll see you soon. <laughs>